Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we explore how to track masks so you can apply an effect to a specific part of a clip in Smoke 2013. I'll show you how to track a simple mask shape, fix the tracker if the point goes off screen, and tracking multiple masks using the same data. Many times when you add or create effects, you need to apply masks to make sure the effect happens only in a specific part of the screen. If the picture is static, this is very easy to achieve, as it's simply a case of adding a mask to the area that you wish the effect to be applied to. When the picture is moving in any way, it becomes necessary to be able to mask the effect to match the movement in the shot. In this example here, we're using the color warper to adjust the color of the sign on the pole. Due to the shot containing many areas of similar tones of red, it becomes difficult to effectively isolate the sign from the rest of the image. This is where masking comes into play. We can create a loose mask around this general area so as to have the color effect occur just within a particular region. Here on the timeline we have two copies of the same clip. The bottom layer contains the original unaffected clip, however the top layer contains the color warper effect we just created. Now we can add a mask to the top layer to keep just the area around the sign while exposing the original unaffected clip beneath it. As the shot pans upwards, we'll need to animate the mask so that it follows the movement of the shot. While we certainly could animate the mask manually to follow the region required, for our purposes, let's look at using the motion tracking tools built into Smoke to achieve the same result. Firstly, we'll apply a mask to the top layer. Remember, Control Tab brings up the video effects bar. Choose Wipe. This creates an animated wipe for the length of our shot. We don't require this, so remove this wipe by selecting All Nodes, and press delete in the lower right hand corner. To create our own mask now, select the add button here. Now plot a mask around the general area we need to isolate. We can create quite a loose mask here as all we're trying to do is isolate the sign so that it's separate from the other red tones in the image that was getting affected by the color warper. Click down on the first mask point you created to close the mask shape. If preview effects is selected over here in the preview options, you should now see the color effect we created inside the mask region we just applied. Right, let's go ahead and track the mask so that Smoke animates the location of the mask for us. Basically, all we need to do is track the mask to a single point on screen. If we needed the mask shape to scale or rotate over time, we would activate the scaling and rotation options found here. That would give us two tracking points so that we can effectively scale and rotate the mask based on the difference between these two tracking points. However, in this case, we only need to track a single point on screen. So with both of these options off, select the Stabilize button found here. This is the Smoke Tracking module. On screen you'll have a single tracking point. A tracking point is made up of two parts. The small inner square is called the Reference Box. This box will look for a specific feature or pattern in your shot to follow. The outer dashed square is called the Tracker Box. Basically it searches a wider area frame by frame to help locate the chosen feature of the inner box. The further you point you wish to track moves on a frame by frame basis, the larger you'll need to make the tracker box so that it can be found successfully each frame. Let's position the tracker over a feature on the flag. Click down inside the inner square and drag the tracker point around the screen. As you move the tracker region, it magnifies to help you choose a feature. For a successful track, look for an area of high contrast and an area where two lines or regions meet, effectively giving you a corner like feature. When you are happy with the feature you have chosen, click the Analyze button. Smoke will step through the image attempting to locate your chosen tracking point. As the tracker processes the image, check to make sure the tracker point is successfully following the chosen area. Here, as you can see, the feature we chose to track disappears off screen. Click down anywhere beneath the screen area to stop the tracking process and scroll back just before the tracking point becomes lost. What we need to do here is tell Smoke to follow another reference point from this point onwards. What we need to be aware of when choosing a new reference point is selecting a feature that appears in roughly the same depth plane and going at the same speed and direction. From the edit mode box on the right, select add. This is how we give the tracker a new reference point to track. Let's choose another point on the sign to help track the shot. If required, zoom in using the Command Plus shortcut to help choose a new tracker reference point. To select the new reference point while still in Add mode, click inside the smaller white rectangle and drag this to the new feature you wish to track. 
To show that you are choosing a new reference point again, Smoke magnifies the view so that you can make an accurate choice. When happy with your selection, click Analyze again. Even though we chose a feature on the other side of the sign, as Smoke continues to analyze, it adds the new tracking data to the existing tracking path we created first of all. See how it's now correcting the points that went wrong in the previous track. And again the tracker has failed, so as before, click down anywhere beneath the screen to stop the tracker, and scroll back just before the tracker goes wrong. Checking that you're still in add mode, click inside the small white tracker reference box and reposition again. Click analyze to set the tracker going again. Now that the tracker has completed, scroll back through the shot to check that Smoke has successfully completed the track. As you scroll along, you'll see the tracker reference point jump to the new locations you chose when the tracker failed. However, these new reference points add the tracking data that was collected to the original tracking path. The key to completing a track that disappears off screen is choosing a new reference point that continues in the same direction and speed and is positioned in the same visual depth on screen. Let's now return back to the mask menu. Scrolling through the timeline bar, we can see now that our mask follows along accurately to the sign and continues to do so as the sign moves off screen. Once we have tracked the shot once, we can use the same data over and over again and apply it to further masks that we create. Just by creating a new mask, we can apply the same tracking data that has already been collected to quickly track the mask into the shot. Down here in the viewing mode box, select schematic. This is a node representation of both the masks we created and the axes which contains the positional data for the mask. By clicking on the axis node here, we can see the timeline now shows the keyframes from the tracking data that we originally collected. So this is our original mask, and this axis controls the position of the mask that we gathered through the tracking process. Over here on the right is our newly created mask. We don't need the axis attached to this mask, so simply drag it to the bottom of the screen to delete. Click Confirm to complete the deletion. We want to take the existing tracking data stored here in the first axis and apply it to our second mask as well. Hold down Shift and drag the axis until it touches this second mask and drag back again. Notice the connection line between the axis and the second mask. Now switch back to Perspective Mode. The mask now follows the correct tracking path, however it has moved from its original location and now takes on the same position as the first mask. This is easily solved. Make sure the second mask is selected. This can easily be done by clicking the previous or next button here until the correct mask is shown as selected. Over here on the right is the axis offset controls. Adjust these controls so that the mask is positioned over the correct area. When you scroll through the shot now, both masks successfully follow along with the chosen areas on screen. Using this same process, you can keep adding as many masks as you require and just make sure the original axis that controls the tracking data is connected to each mask node. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder about some of the key points covered in this episode. To add a mask to a layer in the timeline without using connect effects, use the wipe effect. A wipe effect defaults to a horizontal wipe lasting the length of your clip, so delete it first and then add a new mask. Enter the stabilizer module of the mask to perform any tracking. Making sure you choose an area of high contrast and look for corner details as you'll have more success when performing tracking. When the point you are tracking moves off screen, Stop the tracker, go back and then add a new reference point to continue the track. If you wish to track multiple mask shapes on screen, simply connect all future masks to the original axis in the mask schematic. This will apply the same tracking data. Most importantly, remember this is pre-release software. During the Smoke 2013 pre-release trial, features are constantly being changed and refined, so screens shown or steps taken here in this episode may be implemented differently come the final release. Stay tuned for future episodes of Smoke Training that provide you with short, clear tutorials to get you up to speed on the basics fast.